Do you know that most people die of heart attacks and strokes on Monday morning between 6 and 9 a.m.? That must mean something. I guess the body is laying there like a dead parrot saying, oh, no. <laughs> and then there's, well, maybe I'll have fun when I go on a trip. Aren't we always waiting for a vacation to get relief? And then we get there and we say, oh, what a horrible room. Maybe next year I'll get a better one. I can't have fun here. I know when I retire, then I'll really enjoy myself. And guess what? Then you die. <laughs> your family gets your money, and then they go on a trip. <laughs> Do you know that kids laugh 400 times a day when they're four years old? Think about how often you laugh. The average in America is 15 times a day, 15 times. And you know, that laughter isn't the laughter of childhood, which sort of rolls over the body, turns it into sort of this wonderful mechanism that's just enjoying itself all the way down to the cellular level. Do you know that most adults laugh like this? Ah, uh -huh. ah, uh -huh. show your molars. If you don't have any, show your gums. <laughs> now, as soon as you do this, something very interesting happens. There's a chemical shift in the brain, and the brain starts to say, oh, I think we're happy. <laughs> what a wonderful thing to do in the moment of stress, you know, or distress, when all of a sudden maybe you feel overwhelmed, you just do this. <laughs> and suddenly the brain says, I think we can get through this. <laughs> One of the biggest kicks I had when I was speaking to a, a, a huge audience the, who happened to be the IRS <laughs> was watching them do this group exercise. It was a lot of fun. I figured, aha, a smile audit. <laughs> <laughs> now, what do you think just happened? Chemically, something very interesting just happened. You actually got a relaxation effect, you see? This is a catharsis. You let go. How many of you feel a slight letting go in your physical self? You know, maybe a little tension is, re is reduced. Because what you're really saying is you're coming from a sense of scarcity. You know, we see this in the workplace. We see it in relationships. We're waiting to give of ourselves to others, waiting to let them use our good pencil. This is bizarre, isn't it? I want to live my life to the fullest. I don't know about you. My goal someday is to sit in a tub of butter and start naked eating a lobster. <laughs> I'd like to know how many of you are perfectionists. Like, how many of you have to have things just right? Because you never know. Quite a few people. I suffer from many of these disturbances. How do you think I know them so well? <laughs> well, one of the things that I suggest you buy is a cape. This is a most marvelous cape. And I am a recovering perfectionist. And uh, you know, I, I use this now because you never know. I was always worried that people might stop by and want to tour the basement. They may want to sit in the closets a couple hours. And I used to clean under the toilet in case anyone short showed up. <laughs> now, if you're like this, I suggest you get this and you swoop around with it. See, this is wonderful at work because there's a lot of perfectionists in workplaces who are supremely organized and wish everyone else were like them. So swoop around your building. <laughs> and just say out loud what you normally say to yourself. It's a good thing I'm here. <laughs> I don't know what would happen if it wasn't for me. That simple, simple phrase, I understand, can sometimes help people with some of their negative incidences in their lives. And how about becoming the change you want to see in others? You know, we talk a lot about telling other people what they ought to do, how they ought to be, and what, they will, ha what will happen to them if they listen to us. But if we become the change we want to see in others, we will actually be reflecting what Mahatma Gandhi once preached. And, you know, we are the ones that can change the workplace, the home life, the community by going out into the universe and spreading joy and kindness and empathy. 
And I bet you that you will help reduce anger and violence in the world if you do that.